Welcome ladies and gentlemen to section 2.7 parent functions and transformations. Today we are going to be covering a lot of vocab so just make sure that you're hanging in there paying attention and following along on your note sheet. So our first vocab word is family of graphs and all that is is a group of graphs that display one or more similar characteristics. And also the next vocab word is the parent graph or the parent function. And what that is, is the simplest form of graphs or functions in a family. And now we're going to be talking a lot about the parent graphs or functions. The first one we have is the constant function where f of x just equals any number. All right, this a could be any number. The domain is all real numbers and then the range is what that number is. So your graph would look something like this. And so then, for example, the equation of the constant function or this graph would be y equals 2. Next is the identity function, which you've all seen before. y equals mx plus b, except we don't have a b. It's just f of x equals x. Your domain is all reals. Your range is all reals. So if your graph was y equals x, your graph would just look like this. Now we're getting into the fun functions, where we have the absolute value function, which looks uh, like these bars on the side, right? Those bars right there make it the absolute value function. The domain is all reals. Your range is the real numbers greater than or equal to zero. And so then this graph, all right, is represented by f of x equals the absolute value of x. And then next is the quadratic function, Quadratic function is when you have your variable squared, f of x equals x squared. Your domain is all real numbers. And again, your range is real numbers greater than or equal to zero. And here we have this graph, and it's not quite exact. This point should be um, up here a little bit more, right, as it keeps going up. And then we have the graph of x squared right here. Now we're going to get into some transformations that affect all those parent functions in almost the same way. So the first one is a translation. All a translation is, is moving a figure on a coordinate plane without changing uh, the size, shape, or orientation. Now what it happens is you're going to add a number, so you're going to add a constant k, or subtract from the parent function, we'll move the graph up or down. So if you add to it, you move the graph up, and if you subtract from it, you'll move the graph down. And notice where we are adding. We're adding outside or subtracting outside the absolute value. And here we're adding or subtracting outside of the square. But now, if that constant k is being added or subtracted from x inside, inside being a key word, the parent function, uh, it will move the graph left or right. Well, if you add, if you add, inside the parent function you will move it to the left and if you subtract you will move it to the right I know it's a little bit different thinking but if you add it inside the parent function it will move it to the left and if you subtract it you're going to move it to the right our next transformation is a reflection and a reflection is just a transformation in which the figure flips over the line of reflection the line of reflection or the line of symmetry could be your x or y intercept. Well, if the parent function is being multiplied by negative 1, so it looks like this, right? The reflection is over the x axis. And if it's inside, if it is inside the function, so if it's inside, inside those absolute values are inside the square, it reflects over the y axis. Next transformation is a dilation, and a dilation shrinks or enlarges a figure proportionally. Well now, uh, the parent function is multiplied by a non-zero number, so the non-zero number is a, so all of these would be stretched or compressed vertically. And now coefficients greater than one, right, cause it to be stretched, and coefficients greater than one, so this a, this a would be, or that a, or that a would be bigger than 1, so it would be 2, it could be 2x squared, it could be 3x squared, but now coefficients between 0 and 1 cause the graph to be compressed vertically, so now this graph would look like the absolute value of 1 half x, 
or the absolute value of 3 fourths x, right? And now the difference is here is a linear graph, and it is just the parent graph, but now if you multiply it by a number bigger than 1, right, it is going to uh, be stretched vertically. Notice how it's being pulled in that direction and that direction much more steeply. steeply. Now we're going to describe the transformation, whether it's a translation, reflection, dilation to each function, and then we're going to graph it. So number one, we look at our function with this square. With this square, it tells us that it's going to be a quadratic function. And now we are adding 3 inside of it. So what is that? What kind of transformation is that? It is a translation. And now with that plus 3, remember it's a little bit tricky. That plus 3 is going to move it to the left 3 units. So now instead of this point being here, it's going to move to the left three units so right about there and then we just basically move the graph and so this blue line now this blue line is our new graph it is represented by this equation right here number two we have y equals a negative negative absolute value of x well when you have a negative what is that that's going to be a reflection and now it's a reflection is this negative inside or outside the absolute value. It is outside the absolute value, so it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So here is our parent graph of an absolute value, and now our new graph will reflect over that x-axis. And so now this blue line represents this equation right there. Number three, we have y equals one-half times the absolute value. Well, what kind of transformation is this? This is going to be a dilation because you are multiplying a one-half times your absolute value. And now it is being compressed because of the one-half, right? Because it's between zero and one. So your graph is being uh, uh, compressed vertically. And so now here's our new graph that is compressed. 4. Now what's this look like? Here we have a square, right? So now we know that it is a quadratic function. Now we have a two minus signs, but we have a minus sign inside and outside. We know that it's a translation because we're not multiplying, we're taking away. But now let's think about this. We have to look inside. We're subtracting one inside, so that's going to move it to the right one. And then we're also subtracting outside. But now when you're subtracting outside, that moves it up or down. So we're going to go down 3. So we're going to take this point here. We're going to take this point here. We're going to go right 1. And then down 3 with it. So our uh, vertex here is just going to move, be moved down to the right 1 and down 3. And so now our graph looks something like this. This blue line now represents the given equation. Now we are asked to write an equation for each function. So on number five, what kind of graph do we have? We have a graph that looks like a V. So I know that the, the parent function is Y equals the absolute value of X. We have the absolute value graph. But now what happened to this graph? Are we compressing it at all? No, it doesn't look like it. But what are we doing? We are moving it to the right we moved it to the right three units so how would we move something to the right three units well we have to add or subtract and we have to do that inside of the absolute value so now I have X since I moved it to the right I have to subtract 3 and so the uh, equation of the function would be this guy right there now what kind of graph do I have here I have a linear graph and that linear graph Look something like y equals x, correct? What am I doing to this graph? Well, if you look at your parent function of this graph, it just goes right through here in this general area. Well, it looks like I moved it up 2. So how would you move a graph up 2? You just go y equals x 
again moving the graph up to, you just add to outside of this x. So then the equation for this function would be y equals x plus 2. And that does it for section 2.7, parent functions and transformations. Good day.